Houston, we have a problem. Hey gang, welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Workshop. As I said from the very beginning of this channel, I'm going to do a variety of different things. And by chance, I am now over a thousand subscribers, so thank you for being part of that growth. However, today's problem is with my house, or our house. Let me state this up front. I am not a plumber. I am not a professional plumber. I have done amateur repairs and I've done remodeling and different things like that. So my approach is strictly my opinion and may or may not help you in the problem you have with your plumbing problem. With that said, here's what's going on. We have a pair of toilets that are back to back within our house. They share a common drain. Now we all know toilets get backed up and you can try a plunger. It may help. You can try a toilet snake that may help. But in our instance, neither one of those helped. In fact, my wife used the plunger and it blew out the wax seal underneath one of the toilets. Just so happens to be in a bathroom that I've already remodeled. So with that problem, we ended up with water and, you know, ugh, in on the floor in that bathroom. So my next approach was I used a toilet snake and I'm gonna show you that and how I used it, but that did not change anything that created you know, it didn't, it didn't resolve any problems. So now I'm going to go a little bit deeper, <laughs> deeper. <laughs> well, what I'm going to do is use a 50 foot spring snake to try to clear this out. Now I've talked to friends of mine who are plumbers. My father-in-law is a plumber and you know, a toilet has to function with a vent and water flow. Basically it's a pretty simple system. Now, when you flush the toilet, it would kind of like burp and bubble, you know, in a, in a sense. And it would not flow down. The water would increase within the tank and or in the bowl and just sit there. And eventually it would kind of trickle down over time. So one issue could be the vent. And I'm going to talk about the vent and show you what I'm going to do to try to make sure the vent is open. And then the second thing is a blockage. And I'm pointing to the vent because it's an easy approach. It's the first thing I can attack without really having to get too dirty, let's say. I'm going to take the 50 foot snake and up here, probably in that range right there, I believe I'm pointing at it, is the vent for the bathrooms. So I'm going to feed the snake down that and make sure that it, the vent is clear. So at least that's not the problem. And the reason I say that, again, is for the water to go down, it has to have a, a, a relief, let's say. You know, it's like if you put water in a straw and you had, uh, you tilted it with your fingers tap capped over the ends, it's not gonna move. In fact, you could pinch off one end, if it's a really good straw, and turn it up and open up the other end and the water will stay in there because there's nothing to let the water out. But if you release that end, water goes down because now air can come in the top. That's the same way your vent system works. Anyway, we're going to go over that. I'm going to show you some tools and materials that I have in an effort to try to fix this stinky problem. <laughs> Here's a little more background. We've lived in this house about 30 years and probably about 20 years ago we added on to that end of the house. In doing so we added on an additional bathroom and per the city's restrictions or whatever, we had to add a secondary uh, septic field. So we are on a septic tank and the septic tank is over here basically uh, just briefly or a short distance off of our sidewalk. So it's generally, I'm pretty accurate here, I think it's either this spot right here or it's over here but it's within this range. I think this is actually probably it right right here. So we added on a, a secondary drain field and it's hard to see it from here but if you see that that curl that is one drain field and it actually fingers out or separates and goes down here to towards that tree. The other drain field actually goes behind that one further down in the yard and then comes in further towards the road. Now whenever I had this uh, put in, the people that looked at my septic tank, they said, you don't need this. But because of 
the rules for you know adding on to your house and having a third bathroom you had to add that secondary field so that is the vent for the bathrooms um, I'll get up there and run the snake down through the vent to try to make sure that nothing is blocking it you know I said the snake would be my first attempt really the first attempt was my wife using the plunger in one of the bathrooms and it actually blew out the wax seal because there was nowhere for the water to go and the, the, the seal it will fail when you do that after cleaning up that I decided well I'm gonna try a different approach and I bought this toilet uh, auger as it's called okay now this is a heavy-duty one I didn't have to get that but it's the only one they had at the store at the time so I did get that and I'm gonna show you how that works but this is the first thing that I'm going to put, or first attempt, let's say, at using this snake will be to go down through the roof vent. And hopefully that shows me that the vent is open and it's not an issue. Later on, I'm going to use one of these to reseal the toilet. Um, I talked to a gentleman at the store and he said this is a great product. Um, but this is your typical wax ring that you use on a toilet whenever you're setting it in place or doing a repair so hopefully that gives you some idea of what I'm dealing with okay so here I am up on the roof with the vent and the first thing I did was I took a flashlight and just shown it down inside make sure I couldn't see anything that was blocking the vent I can't see anything so I'm going to go to my second part of this which is running the snake down so let me get that uncoiled and I'll show you how that goes okay I have the spring uncoiled and I'm gonna run it down the vent now another thing is I have my wife on my phone so that she can listen and tell me if she hears the snake come all the way down I'm pretty confident it will but it'll help to have somebody on the other end I don't want to get past the turn there's a anytime these vents are put in they're not straight up and down they actually have from what I've been told a 45 degree angle so it has to get past that 45 to get in there there it goes And there should be a second, 45. Huh. Well, that just sounded like it went through something. Do you hear it down there? You hear it? Gotta hear, I hear it. Yeah. I know it's down at least as far as the toilets themselves. Well, it's, I'm going to say the vent is clear. It's in a good ways. And it's not going to go any further. So, unless it's got to get through an S, but I think it's going to be clear. Well, I'm getting water or something <laughs> on the end of this. So that tells me that it made it through the vent. And I know it's, again, it's a dirty job, but this is part of it. So we're gonna move on to part two. Okay, this is the second bath bathroom or the one that I had remodeled. And I just wanna show you that I know it's it gets nasty, you know, but there's some, uh, the plunger my wife used and then I had experimented by adding more water to the tub on the opposite side of this wall and the water basically 
came back up on this side. So that tells me there that it's not getting through, obviously. But just be warned, when you start doing these sort of things, it may back up somewhere else. And that is what happened here. So she used that plunger on this toilet, and afterwards the wax ring failed, and we ended up with water all over this floor. So what I'm going to do now is pull this toilet out, and to do that I have to do a couple things. If you haven't dealt with toilets before, it's got a water connection back here, which in this case it's a stainless pressure line. So you want to turn off that valve, and that's I've already turned it off, but it's just a matter of turning it clockwise to make sure that's off. And then if you're going to be doing maintenance, you want to flush the toilet to get all the water out of the tank. Just be warned, if you have an issue down below, that water may want to go somewhere. I've already done this previously. I flushed this in an attempt to make everything work, but I ended up bringing my shot back in here and having to suck up three gallons of water off the floor, or maybe more. Anyway, that tank needs to be uh, empty, and you're still going to have some water left in the uh, bowl itself. So just know you may end up having to clean up some water um, at some point. Now, the other thing I need to do is take out or take loose, take these caps off back here. These are just loosely sitting on top. And then the bolts usually like a 7 16 something like that. Take those loose and that will allow you to lift the toilet off of the floor or the base plate. So once I get that line separated and get those bolts out or nuts off of the bolts, I'll be able to pull this all the way out. Now, as I said, you'll have some water left in the tank, and I don't want to mess with that. I want to make sure that water's out of there. And I also have uh, had water in the bowl, and so I'm going to use my shop vac to clean that out. And as I said, I've already vacuumed the water out of the bowl itself. I did say I wanted to demonstrate this toilet auger, as it's called. Um, I'm going to do that before I remove the toilet. Now this one has a little loop up here at the top where the spring actually connects or holds into place. So if you unwind the handle, as you can see it's doing it there, it relieves or releases that spring. Now, the way this works is you are, you're going to feed this in, but you don't want to just shove it in the, in the uh, toilet. You want to use the tool. And I know it's kind of confined in here, but basically if I pull back on the handle, that end retracts. So it pulls all the way up. I think it's about the stop point right there. So you have a little bit sticking out of the plastic tube. The reason for that is then you can insert this into the toilet and it gets you part of the way into the system. Now you can turn the crank as you're going in and you know try to break loose anything that's on the way. So it's kind of hard, I know it's a very small bathroom, but I'm going to be turning the crank and going in uh, through the S-trap basically. See there? So you know it's down into the floor probably two and a half or two feet or so and I'll pull that back out and then pull it out of the toilet and then of course you want to be careful taking this out of the bathroom but you get the idea at least you know now how this auger works. Now what I want to do is remove the pressure line and this one actually has a big plastic collar rather than having a, a nut that you would turn with a wrench this one has a collar on it, so I can just turn that and just know, you know, make sure you have the valve off and if there's any residual water, it's going to come out. You know, that's why I took the shot back and drained the tank. So if I pull that loose, thread that down, yeah, there's a little bit of water coming out and there's going to be some in the pipe itself or in the tube. So now that's disconnected. The next thing I need to do is remove those two nuts on the bottom that hold the bowl 
to the floor. Now in my case these are 7 16 so simple ratchet and socket. Not much holding. So what's holding it now is um, this is a nylon nut which means it has an inner ring of nylon that kind of acts as a locking device. That's why it's got this little extra shoulder up on top. At least that's my assumption. It may be just a regular lock nut, but it would make sense for it to have the nylon in it. So set that aside, don't lose it, and then get the other one loose. Oh, should point out, you're going to have a washer here on top as well. So set that aside, don't lose it. And try to be careful you don't hit the tank any, when you know very hard with the ratchet. This is basically porcelain, and you could crack it. So just be careful. And there are the nuts hanging on at the top. And sometimes you run into problems like this, where the bolt. Is, isn't coming loose. The bolt is kind of loose in the uh, ring that it's supposed to lock into. So you may have to put some pressure on it, push up on it with like a, in this case I'm trying to putty knife, put some tension on it so that the bolt doesn't want to turn. It'll lock into the base. And that's not going to help either. Go to plan B. And again, I'm sorry for any angles here that are going to be a conflict, but what I'm going to use is just a pair of needle nose vice grips. I'm not going to squeeze hard. I just want to get a little bit of tension without damaging the threads because I need to be able to use this bolt again. Otherwise, I'm going to be buying a kit or I may have to use the bolts that came in that other kit. So, just want to hold it. And that's going to work. Yep. So get that washer off and set that aside. Now for the fun part. I'm going to break this loose from that wax seal. So I'm going to. I don't want to pull on the on the bowl or the tank. I don't want to pull on that because it's not that strong. So. I'm going to just wiggle this around a little bit and work it loose from that wax. Now, in my case, I'm just going to set it on the edge of the shower so that it's out of the way. All right. Of course, you look at this and you go, ooh, yuck. Well, this is all wax. That's all that is. And you're going to have to clean that off anyway, so typically a putty knife will just scrape that wax off. You don't want it to go down the drain. So have a paper towel handy so you can catch that. But that's all. That's just wax. Now, again, I know, dirty job. But if I look down in that hole there, there's water. And I'm pretty sure there shouldn't be. Or at least you know, maybe, maybe not that high. So, I'm going to take that snake and push it down into this hole and see how far it goes. Now, I've already cleaned off a good bit of the wax, but another thing I need to remove is this plastic ring right here. This is embedded in the new wax ring, so I'm going to set that aside and thought I'd show you that, but you know, then you just go around and you keep cleaning up any residual wax and get it out of the way. It doesn't have to be spotless because it's going to have new wax or a new seal going in it, but just letting you know that's part of it. Okay, so I have the coil in here with me and I put it on a, car, on a towel on the floor, but I wanted to show you this. This is the crank handle and what it does is you take this uh, bolt loose and you insert the spring into it and then you lock it in and basically it allows you to use it like a crank 
because it's got an offset. So that's how that works. Now, I'm just going to start feeding in the spring and see how far it goes. Hopefully, I actually would like it to find something that would make all this worthwhile. getting stopped by something but it doesn't feel like it's a blockage it feels like it's part of the plumbing itself okay so at this point we have it at a, at a stop it's not going in any further so I have an assistant who's going to turn the cable to the floor, hopefully and we're going to try to get it to go in to the hole Is it, is it clamp tight? Did you tighten the bolt up? Mm -hmm. Because it's not turning in my hands. I don't feel, you, you have to. There, that may be doing it. Yeah, that's, that's doing it. Hold on a second. Hold on. Okay, so you can probably see there's water sprinkled around the opening. What I did is, you know, we had tried to use the spring uh, stake, but it, it only got so far, and it felt like it was really not wanting to get through whatever's in there. So Roger suggested that I use the plunger and just go on top of, you know, the base there and plunge it down in. So what I did is I used water from the hose there, filled this all the way full, and then hit it with the plunger. Now I could see the water, it was actually going up and down, and so that was helping. The second thing I did is I got some, and I happened to use Myers dish soap. This is a, a you know good, friendly to the environment soap that I use, and I squirted a bunch down in there, and then I added more water. So at this point, I've used the plunger a couple times, and the last time I did it, I tried to add some more water to it, and it doesn't seem to be rising anymore. So maybe that, with, along with the snake and the process, has loosened whatever's up in, whatever is in there and gotten it out of the way. So I'm going to try to film that a little bit and show you what I'm talking about. So here's basically what I did. I opened up the spigot while I aimed this at the pipe. And I had filled it, like I said, all the way up to this ring. And it was filling up repeatedly. I did it like four, probably three, four times anyway. And as you can see now, it's not filling up. The water is just going down. But along with that, when it was full of the water, I put the plunger on and forced it down in. I think, honestly, we're really close to having this clear. Now at this point I can see the level of the water going up and down a little bit deep down in there, but you can probably hear it gurgling a little bit. Yeah, that water's going down. It's not filling back up. And by this time, this should be overflowing. I actually think that may have gotten it. Now what I may do is run the snake in there anyway, just to see. So, we're going to try this again. Okay, we're going to try this again and see how far it will go. I 
Yeah, there's about probably better than halfway. We're probably at least 25 feet in. Can you say? Yeah. It's going right through. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to go any further. We've only got about uh, maybe 15 feet of, of uh, snake left. I'm going to call that a success. Now there's one more thing I want to do because there's another toilet on the opposite wall to this. So I'm going to go in the other bathroom and flush that toilet and see if it cycles properly. Did it stay down? It was close. <laughs> but it went. But it went. Okay. It, it came to the flange. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that means it's working. <laughs> Alright, I'm very happy with the function. I've flushed the other toilet multiple times. Have no issues. I'm confident that the blockage is gone. So now I'm going to work on getting the toilet set back on you know the base. Now I'll point out here this base whoever built this house this is not perfectly level you know this actually tapers that way a little bit you can see it sitting up above the floor. In hindsight it might have been a good idea to take this all the way off and reset it but I'm not going to take that apart. I'm going to put it back together because I know that the toilet will sit flush on the flooring so I'm not going to worry about it. Now the kit that I have, I have two kits one has a wax ring and the other one is a foam uh, a new type of foam kit that they sell. I think I'm going to use the foam kit but before I can do that I need to clean off all the wax on the bottom of the, the uh, toilet base. Now as you can see I've laid the toilet on its side And, you know, the way the wax works is it's just a compression. You know, the wax ring itself sits there, and when you bring the toilet down on it, it compresses, and you can see how it's, it's kind of thick on the sides. I hope you can see that. But basically it just compresses, and I'll see if I can get a little piece off of here. But it gets, you know, it kind of fattens up around the ring and that's what creates your seal and this is not a pressure seal remember this is just wax it's um it's just a just a simple fluid seal and they've used these for a long long time so scrape all this off Okay, so there it is cleaned up. Now, the traditional repair is to use a wax ring. And the way this would work is you put the wax ring, it goes on the toilet, as demonstrated here, with the little rubber gasket facing down that goes into the hole that the flange is part of. I've decided I'm going to try something different. I'm going to keep this just in case, but this is kind of a, a backup. Um, but like I said, you would, you would put this on the toilet and then insert it, not on the ring and then try to fit the toilet. Just know that going forward. The kit that I'm going to use is from Fluid Master. And this is foam. A little bit different, but I'm hoping, and it was a little bit more expensive as well, but I'm hoping this kit will work. So let me just show you what's in the inside the, uh, the kit. Obviously you're going to have, it comes with bolts, new hardware, but I'm going to use ones I already have. There's nothing wrong with them, so I'll save those just in case something would happen later on in life. It comes with a blue disc with foam on the back edge here, and it comes with a spacer. Now, if I look at the instructions, it'll tell me that 
you use if you're um, in my case I'm above the floor itself and based on these instructions it says if your flange is above the floor you only need this if your flange is up to quarter inch uh, flange even with or up to one quarter inch below floor then you would work with the spacer and then flange more than one quarter inch it tells you how to arrange things there so I guess it's kind of an option on the uh, second level of you know condition here but on the third one if it's below the floor you're definitely going to add the secondary seal I don't think this separates I may be wrong but I'm pretty sure it's just one solid piece of foam yeah so in this instance I don't need this now what it says to do is to put the seal remove uh, let's see flange above floor remove spacer from seal Say, spacer will not be used above floor and that's talking about the fixed spacer install seal over flange by sliding bolt, ho bolt holes over bolts so I want you to put the bolts in first I should point that out you're going to slip the bolts back into the holes that came from and then put the seal over so that the bolts are held in place and the seal is held in place by the bolts themselves so let's see if I can pull that off now again I'm reusing the bolts it does come with a little plastic washer that is kind of you can maybe hear it it slides on and locks it in place that's what holds the bolt into the collar so I'll slip this in and then over and pull up making sure that I have tension on that collar or on the little plastic washer that holds it in place and what you could do if you wanted to was you could preload that a little bit maybe go down a couple teeth and then put tension on it going in so that you go into the slot and then put a little tension on the washer now what it says to do is to take this and slip it into or around the bolts and that's it now as you can see, I don't know if you can maybe not see, but this bolt is pulling this way so whenever I go to set this I'm going to have to really kind of play with it. I may have to reach my hand around and pull on that bolt a little bit to get it to come through the slot but the, the holes in the um, bowl they're actually slotted as well so it may be enough room there's only one way to find out Feels like it's on there, but it does want to teeter just a little bit. But I think once I snug it down, it should be fine. Now, all I have to do is put on the one on the opposite side so plastic washer, metal washer, and then nut. And again, I may have to hold on to that a little bit with the vice grips just to keep it from turning or spinning on me to a certain point. And then just work it down with either a ratchet or a wrench. Now I will say at this point, while you're doing this, um, it pays to look at how the back of the tank is against the wall. And you can adjust this left and right a little bit to try to square it up to the wall. So just make an observation of that. This one is right on the money, so I'm just going to tighten this down and go on from there. 
Now again, I'm not trying to put 500 pounds of torque on this. This is going to be based on it sitting on that collar more than anything is to keep it from moving around, but that should be just fine. And then, you know, these little caps you can sit on top or sometimes they lock in. This one just happens to sit there. Just a decorative piece. Now the last step, for me anyway, is to reattach the water line. And I'm trying to get some light back there. It's, it's a little tricky. Tight space. But it's just going to slip on and just tighten the nut. There it is. It's full. Some water has come up in the bottom there, so haha <laughs> success. I don't see any leakage. I'll cycle it one more time and we'll find out. Alright, full flush this time. Perfect. Again, I don't see any leaks. No water showing up around. That's a good thing. Mission accomplished. Well, that'll be it for this video. This is probably one of the dirtier jobs that I don't look forward to, but I also don't look forward to spending a bunch of money that I don't have to. Now, in this case, I was able to resolve the problem spending some money. I put it, I have less than $100 invested in a whole setup. I think that 50 foot uh, spring snake was, I think it was $28. And I had also bought the toilet uh, auger. And I'll just keep, you know, those will just go on into storage. But the auger was like $32. But I know there are other ones that are a lot cheaper. So th that one's more industrial. But I'll keep it. And then, you know, I bought the wax rings. That's really it. So less than $100, I was able to get the toilets working again and make mama happy. <laughs> so, you know, try different things. And if you can't, well, if you have to, you're going to have to call that plumber with some power tools and let them figure it out. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, by all means, leave a thumbs up on there. If you haven't subscribed, please do. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. Houston, we have a problem. In fact, February marked the second most rain in Georgia recorded. So. amateur plumber okay but I have a plumbing problem now to give you some background in the past tons of rain and because I'm not a professional but I have a plumbing problem after I show you so that's what I'm gonna do first as far as my repair or, uh, or tech you know cleaned up around it. It's going to need a more cleaning later, but for now I want to get the toilet back in place. But beyond that,